Welcome to Let's Talk Night. Before we get started, we have just a few announcements you won't want to miss. First, if you haven't listened yet, head on over to deepspirituality.com slash Jonah to listen to a new narrative podcast. This series dives into the story of Jonah, a man who ran away from the purpose God called him to have. Make sure to listen because the second episode drops Wednesday. Next, now that it's fall, we're excited to announce the Let's Talk Pumpkin Carving Contest. Plan a pumpkin carving night with your Let's Talk group between now and October 28th. Then post your best pumpkin masterpiece to Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag BACC Pumpkin. Then on Halloween Sunday, each of our Sunday services around the Bay Area will pick a winner. We're looking forward to seeing your fall spirit. So now for tonight's episode. This week, we compiled clips from one of our live stream services called What's Love Got to Do With It? We'll learn about a young man who seems to have it all, but knows something is missing. What he learns from Jesus is an invaluable lesson for each of us, that love is always the answer. Throughout this episode, there will be breaks with questions where you can pause the video and discuss together, and then continue watching. We hope you enjoy What's Love Got to Do With It? and have great conversations tonight. One of the things that can happen to us is before we know it, we're listening to sermons and reading our Bible, we're praying, but our heart's not really in it. There's no love involved. We're not passionate. We feel the apathy. We feel the disinterest. We're no longer valuing seeing or being with Christians. We no longer value seeing or being with God, seeing him move. Before you know it, it's another set of tasks we have to do. Got to go to work got to clean the house, got to get the car washed, got to put on the mask, got to use sanitizer, got to wash the hands, got to go to church, and we have a bunch of got-tos, and there's no love involved. This guy is a guy Jesus runs into, and Jesus sizes him up pretty quick. In Mark 10, 21, what's love got to do with it? Jesus looked at him and loved him. Notice what Jesus did with this guy who was missing it. He was missing out on a few things. He loved him. The great challenge for Christians is do we care? No, let me change that. The great challenge for everyone is do we care? We're living at a very difficult time. And when we get unsettled, when we get anxious, when we get insecure, at least I can speak for myself, one of the first things to go is love. I'm tossing that out. I'm caring about myself. Jesus saw this guy a guy who was a churchgoer, a guy who was following the rules, and he looked at him and he loved him. He, he went, I, I know you mean it, I know you're sincere, but there's something you don't understand. Love has something to do with this. You have to love the Bible. You have to love prayer. You have to love leaping out of your bed in the morning and having a chance to know God. We have to love our spouses, love our kids. We have to love the neighbors and co-workers that we have. Our hearts have to be big, not small. Jesus looked at him and loved him. He didn't judge him. He loved him and he loved him so much. He said, this guy wants to know God. I have to tell him there's something you're missing. And so he's told him, you're still missing one thing. Sell everything you have. Give the money to the poor and you have treasure in heaven. Then follow me. This passage has been misused by so many people throughout the centuries to make people nervous about, oh, I got to sell everything if I'm going to become a Christian. No. Jesus zeroed in and said, you're missing something. You're more attached to your stuff than you're attached to God. You're more attached to money than you are to God. You love what you have. You don't love God and you don't love people. You're following rules because you've not understood that the point of God's commandments is to make us loving. Yeah, that's true. The 10 commandments, the point of it was not to go by the commandments. The point of it was to love people. God listed it out and said, if you do these things, you will love. And instead as human beings, because it's our, 
our tendency to make lists and have tasks and put rules together to make it easier on ourselves. See, following rules is easier than love. And Jesus says, I love you, but I got to tell you the truth. You're missing it. You got to you got to stop loving things and start loving God. Stop loving things and start loving people. You've got to stop getting your value from where you rank and what your status is and where you went to school and where your house is located and what neighborhood and what high school your kid went to or middle school or summer program or whether they play the cello or the violin or play basketball or baseball, they get a scholarship or they don't. You got to get your head out of that and realize this thing is all about love. Christianity is all about love. I didn't understand for much of my Christian life what love had to do with it. It's still a challenge today. And my concern for those of us, whether we're believers or not, is that we're getting caught up into a world that is quite unloving. People are beginning to be hateful toward anybody who doesn't agree with them. People are beginning to be hateful toward anybody who decides to think differently than them. And the most transformative thing we can do is to be loving. Now you may be feeling, or I may be feeling, the way this guy felt. When we get told that love has to come first, that it has to be the first emotion. Mark 10, 22. When the man heard that, he looked unhappy and went away sad because he owned a lot of property. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for rich people to enter the kingdom of God. He's saying, you know, the kingdom of God is about love and it's really going to be tough for people who have built their status up, their sense of identity up around what they own and what they achieve. It's going to be tough for them to come into God's kingdom where we're measured by our ability to love. I know a lot of us right, there, right now, we don't even believe what I just said. In fact, I'm not sure I believe what I just What did I just say? I just said we're measured by our capacity to love. The scriptures teach us that. I'll even have the guys put it on the screen in a little bit. That the only debt that we are left, that we are to leave unpaid is the debt to love each other. You pay every debt off completely. Pay Visa off, pay MasterCard off, pay American Express off. But when that bill for love comes, you don't pay that off. You go into debt. Are you a loving person? Am I a loving person? Is that the priority of our life? Jesus looked around to his disciples and he wanted his disciples to understand this guy's struggle has nothing really to do with money. It has to do with the fact he doesn't want to love. He loves his stuff more than he loves God, more than he loves people. And that's what love's got to do with it. Our theme comes from a Tina Turner song from a long time ago. And I'll never forget listening to this in the radio the first time driving in my car, all of a sudden it came on the radio. And at the beginning, I didn't know what it was all about. But when she got to that chorus, what's love got to do with it? What's love got to do with it? What's love but a second hand emotion? What's love got to do with it? What's love got to do with it? Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? For many of us, we've stopped loving because we've been hurt. Somewhere in our life, maybe many times, we've been rejected. We've been physically hurt, emotionally hurt. We've been abandoned. We've been betrayed. We've been embarrassed. We've been humiliated. And so we decided I'm never going to feel that hurt again. I've experienced that. Where the pain, whether it's at 7, 
27, 37, there's something caught inside of us that says, no one will ever do that to me again. And in that moment, our heart closes up and it says, what's love got to do with it? For some of us, it may be the way we were treated because of our race. For others of us, it may be the way we were treated because of the country we come from. Maybe because of our gender. Maybe because we decided not to go to college. Maybe because we don't speak perfect English here in America. Of course, the English in England don't think any Americans speak perfect English, but that's a whole nother discussion. I think many of us don't like to deal with our pain. We like to instead shut it down and say, I'm going to stop loving. Now, we would never say it that way. In Mark 10, 24, the disciples watch the whole story. It's the religious instinct they see in that guy, that religious instinct. You go by rules, you get your behavior in order. And if I'm doing the rules and I've got my behavior in order, then why isn't Jesus happy? Because love's got something to do with it. There are some of us out there who are way moral, more moral than me and have followed the rules way better than me. There are a lot of you out there, you probably feel like you can look down on a lot of us and go, you people are dirty sinners. You got dirty sinners. <laughs> you know what Jesus says? He sings with Tina Turner and says, you need to figure out what love's got to do with it. In verse 24, the disciples were stunned. They went, wait a minute, because you have to remember, if you go to the Old Testament, which they were all living by, if you were rich, that means you were blessed by God. So the disciples couldn't figure it out. Wait a minute, this guy's rich. How can he not be right? How can the guy with the job, the money, the status not be right? He's been blessed by God. The disciples were stunned by his words, but Jesus said to them again, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And that's pretty tough. Camel go through an eye of a needle. That means it's tough. This amazed his disciples. What amazed them? That people who have a lot don't get into God's kingdom easiest. The poor in life are usually seen as less. The less educated as less. There are a lot of us who look at people from parts of the country where they voted differently than we think they should have voted, and we consider them ignorant and stupid, uneducated. Does that sound loving? Does that sound like Jesus? Jesus looked at the guy who was missing out and loved him. He didn't reject him. He didn't criticize him. He didn't write about him on Facebook. He didn't do a tweet about him. He loved him because Jesus knew that every single human being, however wicked, however evil, however misguided, needs love. That's what love's got to do with it. We have to be honest and we have to have some, you know, some honest talk. Are we going to do this, meaning go by the Bible, or are we going to do that? Embrace our philosophies and ideas to the degree where we abandon the love. Now, you can absolutely hold a lot of different opinions and be loving. I'm not saying you can't. So don't anybody go around and say, oh, well, he said I can't believe in what I believe in. You can believe in what you want to believe in. But the moment what you believe in turns you into someone who's not loving, you've crossed the line with Jesus. And we don't want to do that. Because guess what we want to do? We want to live lives that save lives.